So next up, I'm checking in with John Chapelo, also known as Chap JC, and Brian Stafford, better known as Buck, to talk about DCR decks, DCR Deha, and Tiny Decred. Hi, John and Brian. Thanks for joining us on Construct. Hey, Richard. Hi, Richard. Okay, let's dig right in with DCR decks. Maybe you could give us an intro to that, Brian, and explain what about it that you're interested in and what it's aiming to do. Sure. Um, always happy to talk about decks. <laughs> Decred is, uh, you know, it's obviously we're a leader in blockchain tech. Um, we often talk about uh, the tech races if we're in some kind of, you know, fierce competition to be the one coin to sort of rule them all. But in reality, there's an entire ecosystem of blockchains and it's here to say, and we can't uh, exactly ignore the bigger picture there. And while transfer of assets within an individual blockchain system is generally trustless, the ecosystem as a whole is really not, since exchange of different assets is, uh, is overwhelmingly performed via centralized custodial exchanges. Um, and these exchanges, they require you to place your, your trust and your privacy and worst of all your coin in the hand of some sort of ethereal third party often with disastrous results last year traders lost about four and a half billion dollars to theft and scams on these centralized exchanges now, as an analogy i like to think of uh blockchains like decred or bitcoin as, as sort of these secure oases of trustlessness in a lawless wasteland of centralized custody and risk and if you stick to your own oasis you're fine but moving from one blockchain to another is a dangerous business. The road is treacherous. It's full of charlatans and thieves trying to get their hands on your coin. And the DEX aims to solve that problem. We do that by leveraging atomic swap technology, which enables trustless exchange of assets between different blockchains without the need for an intermediate party. Um, now, atomic swap technology requires a certain type of script that must be supported by the blockchain software. Um, and a few years ago, there wasn't any support, but now most major blockchains do support uh, these contracts. So instead of taking you know, the dangerous road from the Bitcoin oasis to the Decred oasis, atomic swaps sort of allow you to just teleport there. That's the, the promise that the atomic, atomic swap technology brings us. And a lot of people out there, unfortunately, are working feverishly to try to figure out how to make a profit off of this. And I find that, frankly, disgusting. Um, Decred looks at things, I think, a little bit differently. And we view, you know, for, for instance, we view trading fees as a centralizing force. Um, and we're the, so because of that, we're the first decks that collects no trading fees. Because we collect no trading fees, we're sort of able to remove the role of the decks from the picture in large part. And if I had to provide, you know, a one sentence description of what Dex does, we help traders find each other and communicate. And that's it. And even though the DEX API is sort of a familiar market API with markets and orders and an order book, the underlying mechanics are really quite different. Once you are matched and you agree on a price, the DEX sort of just steps aside and observes you while you trade. You trade directly with other traders through these pure four transaction atomic swaps. Uh, and I think we're the first to do that. Also, because we collect no trading fees, we, and we never hold any assets, we're able to avoid the need for privacy, destroying know your customer requirements. Uh, to DEX, you'll always just be a 256-bit random number uh, that paid a registration fee. Um, another important distinction, I think, that separates Decred DEX from other decentralized exchanges is that we're fully open source software. Anyone can fire up a DEX, and there simply is no single Decred DEX that everyone must use. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about the recent developments with DCR DEX? I saw there's been some good progress recently and some tweets about like order matching working and that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, things are moving real fast right now. Um, most recently, personally, my work recently has focused on the developing a client core package, uh, which enables easy access to DEX services from any Go application. Um, and that includes a browser-based GUI, which is being released, released with the DEX. Uh, that's your familiar trading interface with market and limit orders, order tables, and charts. And we're putting a lot of effort into providing a very familiar, intuitive experience so that, at least for a casual user, the experience of trading via DEX is exceptionally close to trading via a centralized exchange like Binance or Bittrex. Uh, John, on the other hand, is more focused on the server side of things. So, you know, I'll let him sort of speak to that now. 
Yeah, I'll bring you up to speed on uh, the, the server uh, activities, but I just wanted to uh, echo what you said in your introduction. I thought that was really good, uh, particularly the part about DEX being open source software, because it, it often seems to be a misunderstanding that we're, we're launching a service, but we're really running software. Um, anyway, so uh, on the server side, what's going on recently is that, we, well, we've been reliably matching orders and coordinating swaps for a couple of months now. Um, but we're still working really hard to ensure a smooth experience um, uh, with graceful error handling uh, and to add the necessary administrative functions to the server. Um, so very soon we're planning to open up testing in a sort of pre-alpha stage um, just on test nets where we expect bugs and some challenges, but we'd like to have it as smooth as possible. Um, so an important part of this is uh, community conduct. Um, and what this means is ensuring that users uh, follow the rules as they're defined in the DEX specification, um, and then applying uh, the rules fairly in response to uh, all of the violations. Um, uh, for example, uh, failure of a trader to execute um, the required actions um, when they're matched with another order uh, might result in loss of their registration fee um, and the need to re-register to con continue trading. Um, and, and while no funds can ever be lost in this process, even in uh, the case of an uncooperative party, it's important to discourage disrupting the smooth operation of the DEX for the sake of all the other users. So that's something we're working very hard on now. Um, and, and lastly, the other high priority part of the server work that I'm, I'm into at the moment pertains to uh, smoothly shutting down, restarting, um, uh, and changing market configurations without uh, disrupting uh, the markets too much. Um, and this is particularly important for the uh, atomic swap um, coordination because, uh, because those can go on for several minutes because they're on chain. Um, so, so that's pretty much it uh, for, for the high priority server um, work going on at the moment. Cool. So once we get the server up handling all of the restarts and everything smoothly and we've got some pre-alpha testing, beta testing going on, what else what have we got to look forward to after that? And what kind of rough time frame are we looking at for that? Well, there's, there's some pretty exciting stuff uh, in, in the pipeline further ahead. Um, and I'm feeling very optimistic about it because we have a number of, of great devs, both from within the Decred community and different projects and new devs coming on to help us test code um, and prepare for uh, the release and beyond. Um, and, uh, you know, since the announcement of the plans to develop the DEX, one big thing has been the idea of a decentralized server mesh. Um, and this has been under discussion and a factor of all our decisions. Um, so now the, the idea of a server mesh is that you will not be connecting to just a single server run by a single operator, but to a distributed network or dis decentralized network of, of DEX nodes uh, through which the orders are broadcast. And, and once we see DEX operating in a single server configuration on mainnet, we'll likely kick up off an independent project uh, to pursue that. Uh, you know, and, and like like I said earlier, you know, after the initial release, uh, these things can, uh, can can start off in earnest, and, and that's probably something we'll see in uh, late summer with a, a mainnet beta. Um, and and finally, for next for next steps, I think uh, there's a potential for projects to build on Dex, a lot of potential actually, um, and and one of such idea is the idea of a one click or an instant exchange, such as the ones we see now, but built on top of Dex. Um, you know, this would provide an interface for people who aren't necessarily interested in markets or orders or, um, you know, books. Um, and who the kind if you just want to convert from one asset to another without too much fuss. So um, these are the, the main things that we've been talking about recently, um, in addition to supporting SPV clients that that would, you know, potentially open up the door to mobile trading. Um, so, yeah, a lot of a lot of great stuff coming. Great. Thanks for that. It's always great to hear about new developers finding Decred and getting involved with the various projects and about different ways that teams can add on to the, the open source like foundations that are being built within the Decred project. Yeah. So speaking of those, maybe we could talk a little bit about DCR data now. You've been working on that since as long as I've been around, John. Maybe you could give us a, a little introduction and the latest on DCR data. Sure. Um, yeah, DCR Data was a project um, that I, I think I kicked off about a year into Decred's history. Um, and just to give a little background on what it is, um, so every pretty much every blockchain project needs a block explorer. 
um, which is a web-based application that lets you browse blockchain data, such as transactions. And in Decard, we decided to build our own. Um, and, and that's what DCR data uh, is. But it evolved into uh, much, much more than just a block explorer. Um, so it also provides an API to uh, programmers uh, so they can retrieve a wide, a wide range of structured data for their applications. Um, and it has its own specific, uh, Decred specific API, but it also supports the ubiquitous Insight API um, so that uh, existing uh, consumers can uh, work with that if they already know how to. Um, and there's many of those. Um, so some other features of DCR data that are pretty amazing are the charts. Um, they'll let you see a high level of, of view of Decred uh, activity, such as staking, ticket price, uh, hash rate, and things of that nature. Um, but more recently, um, there's been a very, uh, very well-developed uh, markets page that gives you a very clear picture of Decred activity on some of the top exchanges. Um, Let's see, most recently, we've uh, added a page that lets you explore the real life economic costs um, if you were to launch an attack on Decred's hybrid proof of work purpose stake network. And even with an extremely conservative set of assumptions, it demonstrates the power of the hybrid system uh, with stakeholders required to approve all of the mine blocks. Um, so that was a really cool addition that just went on to the main site recently. Um, another recent addition is uh, support for Decred's privacy features. Um, which is rapidly gaining trans uh, traction. And, and DCR data now labels such transactions um, and also tracks uh, the, the rate of mixing, uh, the size of the anonymity sets, and it shows those in charts. Uh, so DCR data is becoming quite full featured and is actually near, uh, near feature complete at this point. Uh, but we're in the process of adding support for atomic swap transactions, which I think will go nicely uh, with the upcoming decks. And uh, I think I think Buck had some things that he wanted to say as well about DCR data. Yeah, yeah, I came on board with uh, uh, DCR data and Decred in general uh, in the fall of 2018. Um, by that time, all the hardest bits of DCR data were done, but the front end was still a little rough. And I think at this point, that's all sort of been all polished out. And we've also had a chance to really optimize a lot of data retrieval codes. Um, uh, or data retrieval routines. You know, if you compare DCR data to another blockchain out there, one thing you'll notice is that DCR data is just screaming fast in comparison. Um, and we have a really specialized interface that that is uh, exposes the unique features of Decred. And for me, working on DCR data has has been you know really a, an amazing experience of learning through doing. And at Decred, I'm lucky enough to be guided by Decred's experts like, you know, John, Dave, and, and Jake. You know, and, and additionally, once I learned the DCR data API, I thought it, it might be a good idea to build some Python tools to interact with it. I like Python, so I thought maybe I could build some Python tools to interact with it. That that ended up, that personal project sort of developed into D Tiny Decred, which is now the official Python toolkit and Python wallet uh, uh, for, for uh, Decred. So DCR data sort of spawned that work. All right, that's uh, that's great. Thank you very much, Brian and John, for those updates on those projects. All right, thank you, Richard. Thank you. Decred is secure, adaptable, sustainable. Learn more at decred.org.